What's going on everybody? Welcome to the fast tutorial for the 2022 Toyota RAV4 LE. Remember you can change the speed of the video. I typically will go from left to right and I'll finish up with the screen. So let's begin. Starting on the door card, there's auto down and auto up windows all around. So by pushing it down and letting go, it goes down and I give it a hard pull and it goes up. I can stop it or continue like so. The door locks are gonna be symbolized with these little symbols here, but if you feel without looking, there's two little nubbies on the button, which are also the same on the remote. So you'll know that the two little nubs are gonna be locked. You can lock the windows here, which will give you a little green LED to show you that the windows are locked. And for the mirror adjustment, I push the L to toggle the left mirror. Neutral is in the middle, and I push down for R to do the right mirror. When the doors are locked, I can actually bypass the door lock by simply pulling on the door handle. And I can even lock it by hand like so. Down below, I have locking floor mats with a quarter turn lock. So if I pull them to the side like this, I can undo the floor mat, but make sure you don't forget to lock them back in place, signified by these arrows here. Moving on up, I have the lever for the locking gas cap, which is on the driver's side. And if I pull this, that's for the hood latch. Onto the steering wheel stock, there's a pull down lever right here. I can pull that down, lower and raise the steering wheel and telescope it, but don't forget to lock it back into place. The buttons on the dash on the very left side control the brightness to the speedometer and the gauges with a locking position for the most bright and the activation for the auto high beams, which with the LE base level, I have to take it out of daytime runner lights and put it forward to regular headlights. And speaking of the headlight switch, I have different positions for off, daytime runner lights, parking lights, and regular headlights. When I turn on the regular headlights, if the auto high beams is activated, I'll have a little symbol on the display with the A, meaning the high beams will be automatic. I don't have to actually push this forward. Unlike two years ago, I would have to push this forward to activate them, but now doing so actually bypasses the auto high beam feature. So if you're not using the auto high beams, you no longer have to turn it off by the button here. You can just simply bypass it. On the right side of the steering wheel, I have the stock for the wipers. There is an intermittency level, but there's no ring for changing the actual intermittency. It just comes once in a while. Down again for low and third time for high. This area twists for off on the back wiper, intermittent once in a while for the rear wiper and on steadily for the back wiper. The steering wheel has buttons on the left and right. Starting with the left side, these arrows will actually change the menu selection in the MID. So going from left to right, you'll see the different menus on the top light up. When I'm in one of the menus, I can even go up and down, signified by the little dots on the side. And I can see even more menus on the scroll. Once I have something that I wanna select, I can hit okay to select it and hit the back button here. So for example, I can go over to the right. And if I hit and hold okay, I can edit some of the features or settings for better on the lane trace assist. And then I simply push the back button here and it brings me back to the previous menu. Now I'm using my arrows to go back. The button here works when you're connected to Bluetooth. You can answer and hang up calls right there. You can also change the volume on the steering wheel to your music or your phone call and do voice commands. Onto the right side of the steering wheel, I have my cruise control and a couple more buttons for music. So to set the cruise control, I hit the radar button or press and hold for it to go to the regular cruise control that will not stop or slow down. But if I simply push this, the screen right here, the call the MID will say radar ready and I can set it by pushing down. I can increase my speed or decrease my speed, which will show on the MID, your multi-information display. And I can change the following distance right here. There's three different following distance for your dynamic radar cruise control. But like I said, if you press and hold down this button, the little symbol of the car disappears and the arrow goes to the left, that symbol will show up here. So for instance, when I push that, I get the little car symbol. But when I push and hold, the car goes away and it goes to regular cruise control. So you have the option, which is nice. This is the lane departure alert, which also has lane trace assist. That's part of Toyota Safety Sense. You can change those settings like I mentioned over here. We'll get into that once I get to the MID. And mode will actually change through different music modes. And if you press and hold, it acts as a secret pause slash mute button. 
onto the Speedo cluster, I have a little stock here that I can push, which on the bottom right of the screen, you'll see my trips and back to odometer. And I just press and hold in order to clear the trips like so. On the left, I have the RPMs. I also have my engine temperature. On the right, I have my fuel level and I have my speed on an analog level. But if I use the, the arrows on the steering wheel to go through the different menus, I can actually set it so I can see my digital speed, which is great. On the bottom left of the screen, I have the gear that I'm in, my miles, the time, and the outside temp. I'm gonna turn off the radar to the cruise control. Going from left to right, I have this menu here, which is gonna show me what some of my safety sense systems are doing at a glance. The next one is information about the vehicle and the trip. So this shows me my trip distance and overall time. Individual tire pressures, which is now standard on the LE, awesome. People really wanted that and the all-wheel drive control, which will show you how much power each wheel is getting. In the settings menu, I can change some advanced settings to the safety sense system which is how the car sees what's in front of it. So if I press and hold the OK button, I can turn the lane center on, turn the steering assist off, do them individually. I can change the sensitivity and even turn on and off sway warning for when the car senses I'm driving tired. The sway sensitivity can also be adjusted. So these are features where the car will try to keep you in your lane and the lane trace assist will actually try to keep you in the lane center when you're in the cruise control. Hitting the back button, pre-collision, press and hold OK. This is where I can change a couple things about the pre-collision system. That's the system that will slow down and try to stop if you're about to hit a car or a person. Blind spot monitor I can turn on and off. Rear cross traffic alert will alert me when it senses cars driving around while I'm in reverse. And road sign assist will sense speed limit signs and a couple other road signs and display them on the screen. Of course, I can turn that off as well. And there are also some additional settings here where I can change the auto start stop feature, which is where the engine turns off at the red light, the tire pressure warning system, the rear seat reminder to remind you to check for kids and animals back there and scheduled maintenance. Down here, I can change some of the settings to the actual readout, like my language units, and I can turn off the eco reminder. The eco reminder just goes on when you're driving economically if you're keeping the RPMs down low. Over again, the messages for warnings and maintenance. So if you need maintenance or it senses something's wrong with it, it's actually gonna store that little orange symbol. The little triangle is gonna store an orange and it's gonna light up and then go down to the bottom and stay there until you fixed what is wrong. Back again to the right and it restarts to the leaf menu, which is right here. That's my eco menu where I have a couple pages like digital speed, press down for my overall average of mileage and distance to empty and my eco readout, which will show me kind of like my throttle response. Also showing distance to empty. Distance to empty basically shows on all three of these screens, which is great. That's something that people really like. My personal favorite, the digital readout. The signals are gonna be up here, the brights, and if fog lights were an option, it would show up over there. And of course you have the auto high beams that will light up over there. It's a very simple readout. Now let's move on to storage and buttons by the shifter. So for storage, you push this little button and this pops open, it's spring loaded and you have two USB-C plugs and that's it. No shelf, you have to get your own shelf if you want one, most people don't. There's a little cutout for your wire, that's not where you do Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, that's just for simple charging. Cup holders are here, which kind of custom fit themselves to your mugs and thermoses and bottles. Little holder with my different drive modes. So like mentioned in the review video, I have Eco, Normal, and Sport mode. I can change that while driving, I don't have to stop. Eco is going to depower me a little bit, normal is going to be a blend, and sport's going to give me more power. Here's the thing, in eco mode I gain a couple miles per gallon, in sport mode I lose a couple miles per gallon, but I can change this while driving. Snow mode is going to take off in second gear to reduce my wheel slip, mud and sand is going to change the way the all-wheel drive system handles those terrains, as well as the same as rock and dirt, which I can also do while moving. For the shifter, to shift I push this little button in, and I can go right down into drive, if I pull the lever to the left, I can actually shift, if you see the symbol for plus and minus, I can shift up and down the gears, which on the MID, on the bottom left, will show me which gear I'm in. So it's great to change the gears, drive spirited, or just maximize RPM control. For instance, say it's snowy out and I want to stay in second gear and keep the RPMs at 3000, I could shift down into second gear, keep it at 20 miles an hour, keep the RPM, RPMs at 2500, and I am a tank going uphill in the snow. 
The parking brake disengages on its own and re-engages, symbolized by the light up red. There it is. But if you also go to the readout, it'll show you right over here, it says park, so you don't even have to look down. But another great feature is the parking hold, which you have to be buckled up to do. When I push that button, I'll get a little green symbol here that says hold. When I put it in drive, it'll also say hold in gold. Once you see the gold, I'm in drive, right guys? I can take my foot off the brake and the car literally sits. And what's nice is I give it a little bit of gas, it'll go forward and once I come to a stop, check for the gold, take my foot off the brake, I'm chilling. Great for the drive through, great for the city driving, just don't forget to put it back in park. Speaking of driving, I also have the option to turn off the traction control slash vehicle stability control. You have to press and hold to turn them all off. That's going to be great if you need all power to the wheels. Say you're on a gravel trail or you're driving through some deep snow and you just really need it to be a dedicated tank. Based on your experience, experiment with it. Don't mess around with it. You want this on 99% of the time. The auto start stop is the feature where all the wonderful new cars turn the engine off at the red light. Some people like it, some people don't. It can squeeze a bunch of miles out if you're in the city and you're hitting a lot of red lights. But if you're in the country like me, you don't want the engine turning off at the red lights because the air conditioner is not as cold and the heat's not as hot. They give you the option right there with a the button, which is great. So when you push that, you get the little orange symbol up here and you will no longer have the feature where the engine shuts off at the red lights which is the antithesis to a hybrid because that's what hybrids do and maximize to gain their gas mileage running off the battery. Moving on to the climate control, I have these two large knobs which are very easy to use even if I have winter gloves on. The left one is going to do my fan speed. The right one is going to do my temperature. The temperature is just a little lever here without a digital readout. So that's gonna be moderate, that's gonna be hot, that's gonna be more cold. So no more numbers. If you get a RAV4 with dual zone climate, these are actually going to be their own temperature separately, showing a digital number, and your fan speed would be here. But with the LE gas model, it's fan speed, temperature, everybody gets the same temp, including the ventilation in the back. Which is nice that there's ventilation in the back. I can turn the system off like so. To resume it, I just turn the fan back up front and rear defroster right next to each other and what's nice is my air direction is right next to its button. AC and recirculate are right here because you want to use those together in the hot and muggy weather and I also have max AC to really cool myself down. Above the climate control I have a big fat button for my hazards just to let people know I'm slowing down really fast or I'm stopped. Like I said I'll save the screen for the last so let's move up top. Simple flipper switch, no auto dimming sunglass case with a soft backing here safety connect button good for one year unlimited miles from date of purchase on a brand new toyota make sure you download the toyota app and get your safety connect registered it's awesome it can save your life it saved a couple of my clients lives individual lights here all upgraded to led of course you can put it on with the door or turn on all the lights like so and i also get the led with the mirror at the base level which is great Glove box is locking, decent size with a college course for your Toyota, and a separate shelf here. Not a very good non-stick surface, I could still see things sliding around, but it's the same as this. It's going to reduce the sliding, but not by a ton. And back to here real quick. The USB is where I do my Apple CarPlay, and on the right, I just, on the left, I have a classic 12 volt, oops, sorry man, classic 12 volt charge. On to the screen. So for most new Toyotas, you have a screen like this, no matter what the size, unless you have a big 12.3 inch Highlander screen or the Prius Prime, the higher trims. But yeah, your Corolla, your Camry, RAV4, Highlander, they're gonna have screens like this. It's gonna be a touch screen, got the reverse camera right here for you. And we have the hard buttons on the sides. The two main knobs here are gonna be the power and the volume for the radio. Also tune and scroll for the radio. The more important buttons are on the left, which is nice that Toyota did that. The less important buttons are here. Of course, you have seek and track for the radio, phone, which is a redundancy because you have the phone here when you're connected to Bluetooth, but say the passenger wants to access it, they have the button on that side and then apps, which are just your Wi-Fi notifications through Toyota. 
We used to run the Antune app suite. Let me know what you guys thought about Antune if you're old school Toyota people from like the 2014 to 2017 range. Antune was awesome, right? So the home screen is where you're gonna usually spend most of your time because it shows you different information all at once. And if you simply click one of them, it takes over the whole screen, which is great. Then you just push home again. You can even customize what the home screen shows, which is next. Because when we go to menu, we can go to setup and I can change my color theme, turn the beep on and off, and customize the home screen. See, I can change the layout, and I can change what information shows, so that's great. But when you're running Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're not going to be using the home screen because your screen's going to look just like your cell phone. But down below, there are some more advanced keyboard settings, and on the bottom is where I'm going to check for my software update. But you'll spend most of your time up here for the first couple weeks. Bluetooth settings and audio settings are here. I can even change some phone settings. I can train the car to recognize my voice, which is nice. If I go down, here's where it gets interesting. For vehicle settings, I can actually change the door locks. So I can make it so that the doors stay locked when I put it in park and don't unlock automatically. And a couple more advanced settings like my auto relock timer. And I can turn off the lights. Say I only want it to beep but not light up when I lock it. I can even change the tone, the volume, which I did on my truck. I turned it down to number three because it was a little loud for me. And you have some convenient services here. Light settings is great too because you can control how long the headlights stay on to light up your driveway when you shut it off and your interior lights, which I have set to 30 and I have the other one set to 90. So yeah, some advanced settings here. Also a nice one to use is when you go to menu, go to display and you can turn the screen off and still listen to your music and you push any button to turn the screen back on just in case that screen's a little too bright and don't forget you can change the brightness to everything here as well i have mine down just about a third way because it's a little bright for me at night time but it's nice that you can just kill the screen if you want to by simply pushing display and screen off a little bit more advanced you have your general and your camera settings so for general i can change the brightness and the hue i don't recommend this unless you have a special eye sensitivity because the car is designed to sense when it's dark out and kind of change things let's see information eco another menu that a lot of people use i'm trying to skip some of the super advanced things guys i want to show you the stuff that you're going to use so it doesn't turn into a 30 minute video so yeah, you can see trip information. This is some good economy stuff for gas economy information. Give it a couple weeks after ownership to really see what the, the real numbers are. And then everything's interweb, so I can access audio here or just hit the audio button, phone or the phone button around the steering wheel, apps, same thing, projection for the car play. But setup is really the, uh, the gold ticket right there. For audio, which I can't play because of copyright reasons, you have your different sources. Every new Toyota is going to come with 90 days of complimentary uh, Sirius radio, or at least in my region they do, which is great. Then when you're done, you know, you can haggle with them and try to get a good number on a yearly subscription. This is where you prompt to connect to Bluetooth, or you can do it by just hitting the phone button if you want to connect the Bluetooth for the first time. Map, this is just going to say something about an app. We used to use Scout GPS Link which to me was a colossal failure, but some people thought it was great. Apple CarPlay is the way to go. So that's why it says this. It doesn't mean that your car is messed up. It just means you gotta plug it down below for your smartphone. Most people have a smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, I'm jealous of you, but you don't have navigation now. But if you don't have a smartphone, you probably don't care about navigation. You're probably printing out MapQuest or behind the seat here, you probably have an Atlas that you pull out and get a magnifying glass and jot down what route you're taking. But for everybody else, that's normal. Just plug into your CarPlay, and when you hit this, it's going to show Waze or Google Maps or Apple Maps right there. So that's the fast button tutorial of the 2022 Toyota RAV4 LE. I tried to keep it concise and simple. I skipped some of the advanced keyboard and dealer settings, which most people do not care about. What do you think about the color themes? Should we have more than four options? I think so. But this is pretty nice because it matches the red needles here. I put that on all the SEs for the Camrys. So let me know what you thought. If this helped you or you're in the market and this kind of gave you a better idea of the technology, shout out down below. You can always catch me in the comments. And be sure to check out my videos coming for the RAV4 LE Hybrid, as well as the tutorial to the RAV4 LE Hybrid. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.